Prime Minister Andrew Holness was in Guyana from July 4 to 6. Representing Jamaica at the 37th regular meeting of the Conference of the Heads of Government of CARICOM. I found to be very useful. This is my first meeting and it does offer a very important forum for leaders to share thoughts, strategies and experience on issues that affect us in a common way. CARICOM is modeled of the European Union, so it was no surprise that the United Kingdom's vote to leave the EU had member countries contemplating their role in the regional grouping. Jamaica was no different. As a region, we must proactively assess the likely threats and opportunities these global changes present. However, as we consider the evolving global order, equally, we must seize the opportunity to reflect upon our own community, to assess whether we are on track with our own plans and commitments to secure economic growth and prosperity for our people. And with that in mind, Prime Minister Holness commended CARICOM on its move to adopt and implement a strategic plan for growth and development. It is our expectation that the plan will be fully implemented to strengthen governance, capacity building, and our regional economies. In the meantime, Mr. Holness reiterated government's intent to have a referendum on whether the Caribbean Court of Justice should replace the UK Privy Council as Jamaica's final appellate court. Regionally, integration processes like the CSME can deliver economic and welfare gains. But we must be mindful of the fact that the CSME, as a mere concept, cannot deliver these promises. So Mr. Holness urged CARICOM to make the free movement of people on equal standing as trading the Caribbean single market and economy, CSME. He reasoned that reports of Jamaicans being treated poorly or denied entry into countries within the region negated the true meaning of regional integration. We believe that bilateral consultations supported by additional effort in the institutions of our community can make the movement of labor equal to that of the movement of goods, a reality that would extend the progress and benefit of the integration effort. He says those bilateral discussions must involve country-to-country -country economic and social relations. In this regard, we are pleased to be negotiating a joint commission agreement with Trinidad and Tobago, through which we hope to develop a mutually beneficial cooperation program. In a post-CARICOM press conference, Prime Minister Holness supported the group's intent to lobby the U.S. government to reconsider ending correspondent banking arrangements with the region. The matter is one that could lock out the Caribbean from the international financial system um, if it is not addressed. Mr. Holness said CARICOM would be enlisting the help of friendly countries such as Chile in this regard. He said Jamaica would also be increasing its engagement with Chile in relation to trade, cultural, social and economic exchange. Jamaica will also be looking into a citizenship through investment program. We would want the people who come to invest in our country to also seek citizenship. Um, we want them to have a stake in our country and not just to, to view the country as a means of profit, but a place to live. On the matter of security, CARICOM received reports from the Implementing Agency for Crime and Security and the Advanced Passenger Information System, APIS. We also had a very frank discussion on what is required of Caribbean countries to secure their borders, but even more so to secure their economic zone. And Jamaica's Prime Minister urged CARICOM to have greater engagement with the Dominican Republic over some citizens of Haitian descent being denied citizenship. Prime Minister Andrew Holness closed out his participation in CARICOM 37 with a call for unity. We have the potential in all our countries. But individually, 
within our own spheres, we will never achieve what we can achieve when we work together as one strong, unified force.